That Rain-Kissed Umbrella, Chapter 6, a Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction written and narrated by Eleanor Rose, video edited by T.S. If you haven't heard the previous five chapters or the previous two parts of this series, make sure you go listen to them first. You can find a link to them in the description box. And if you'd like to support this channel, make sure you leave a comment and a thumbs up to help the YouTube algorithm. How? How was this happening? Adrian sat back straight in a circle with people he could have had fun with if this were taking place, say, three months ago. But now he was playing third wheel to his best friend's game night and his ex, and the girl she dumped him over, kind of, while sitting in a circle playing too many poops. Also, Nathaniel was there, but that was kind of a minor detail. He didn't help lace the corset of anxiety keeping his back straight and stiff. What was more surprising than those attending was how well Chloe and Marinette were getting along. If anime had taught him anything, it would be that those two should be at each other's throats right now. How were they getting along? He loved Chloe, but there's no way she doesn't have some form of a revenge plan in her mind. Adrian, your turn, Nino chimed in. Oh, yeah, games. Alia brought this one in because she'd supported it on Kickstarter. He pulled a cat from the deck and a teaser from the item store before setting other cards into play. He scooped two poops from his litter box, then replaced them with four more, one for each of his cats in the game. What, you aren't going to attack someone? Chloe said, eyebrow raised. He had the perfect opportunity to lure one of her cats into the wild, but honestly, the less interaction, the better. It was awkward enough for him already. Something was up, but he couldn't tell what. The opportunity came when Marinette reached over to steal a cat from him, and Chloe's eyes narrowed as she got too close. There. He knew Chloe couldn't be okay with Marinette after all. But was it because she hated Marinette? Or because she still had feelings for him? It would be better if it were the latter, for multiple reasons. Somehow, Chloe's slip of nonchalance gave him enough confidence to have a backbone. The next turn, he placed poop in her litter box and stole a self-cleaning litter bot from her. Her jaw dropped, and she lifted her cards to hide her mouth and nose like she always did. Ah, oh, yes. This is what it was like. Adrian had to will himself to not tear up. How could he be so happy yet so heartbroken in the same moment? Sitting across from her was bittersweet and would probably result in therapy down the road. Your turn, Marinette, he said, keeping his eyes on Chloe. He couldn't tell in this light, but he could swear she was blushing under his gaze. She tucked a loose hair behind her ears and looked away, and that usually paired with reddened cheeks. Oh, sure, Marinette said. She had to stand up a bit to reach from the draw pile, but in doing so jostled the table, knocking a drink over. Adrian jolted back in surprise from the noise, and she squeaked, arms retreating to her chest. Sorry! It's fine, he said hearing Nino mumble something similar. It's just water. But the cards, she began. Sis, it's fine, Alia insisted, throwing a towel down. It's just water. Marinette's face was as pink as the macaroons she'd brought to the party, but a knock at the door saved her from responding. She flew to answer it opening the door to a blue-haired man resting his body weight on the door frame. Wait a minute. That's Luca. Oh. His heart sank. He must be dating Marinette. It'd been nearly two months since he and Chloe broke up, after all. 
and that was the last time he'd talk to anyone about him. Way to cause a mess and then get out of here, Chloe said. It was clearly a tease, but it came out more like a jab, and Marinette visibly stiffened. Oh, Chloe, you can do better than that. But I'll take that as my cue to leave, too. I don't want to get stuck on cleanup duty. She stood and stretched, accidentally bumping into Nathaniel, who turned as red as his hair. Bye, Chloe, Adrian managed, weakly raising a hand. She paused for a moment, looking at the door, then back at him. Bye, Adrikins. That wasn't fair. It's not fair to use a pet name after they'd broken up and he wanted to get back together. More than that, it wasn't fair that after she left, he was thinking about the whiff of Marinette's shampoo he caught as she leaned over for the draw pile earlier. It wasn't fair. It wasn't right. He was a mostly good person, so why did he have to put up with this telltale heart? How had he gotten so weak in the first place? Whatever. It's time to clean up. If only cleaning out his heart was as easy as cleaning off a dinner table. Thank you so much for listening. Chapter 7 is on the way. In the meantime, you can check out other videos on this channel for more fanfiction. I'll catch you next time.